guys, welcome back to the Recovery Lab. This is Mike. We're gonna do another session sit-in today. I have my good friend Lou here, who's a college baseball player. Um, real quick uh, history on Lou. He's had a history of some like low back pain with with lifting and squatting, squatting particularly, but also kind of throughout the season, uh, he'll tend to get some lower back pain, just some hip tightness in general. So one of the things that we've really worked on a lot with Lou is improving his hip mobility so that he's more efficient in his swing, right? So a lot of times it'll happen in rotational athletes is that they'll start to lose some of the mobility either, you know, in this case for a baseball player in that front side hip. And so you can't rotate into it as efficiently and that can cause you to place undue stress on other areas of your body, i.e. either your lower back or if it goes down the chain into the knee. So what we're gonna see today is we're gonna kinda do what's been like our go-to's for, you know, how long have we been working together? Like over a year, I guess? Two years. Two years now? So we're gonna go through our go-to's in terms of um, some of the release work that we've done. So we're gonna do some psoas release and we're gonna really work on his deep hip rotators um, you know, in his glute and then probably into his quad a little bit as well. So stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do with Lou is we're gonna do some psoas release. So, you know, this table's really high for what I would normally do. I don't have my assistant in here to film today, so I'm kind of flying solo on the camera. So I apologize if it's not as quality in terms of what you're able to see. But, you know, for Lou, he really, the biggest thing for him is, is he kind of like lacks hip extension and internal rotation. Those are like the big two red flags for me when it comes to like understanding that, okay, psoas is probably implicated in this. Um, so when I first met him, he had a severe positive on the Thomas test for quad tightness and, and some deep hip flexor restrictions. And that's kind of really been the thing for him that's been the most effective. Um, you know, I can release him pretty easily now. Um, and we get great results in very, very little time. Uh, in fact, even during the season when he's able to kind of see me consistently, we can really stave off a lot of like the low back pain and, uh, and your performance, right, at the plate much better too. So, I mean, you know, it speaks to, you know, when you see an athlete who either has an injury, a chronic injury, or, you know, maybe you start to see them not performing at the same level as they're, that you're normally accustomed to seeing, look at their mobility and look at like some of the basic foundational movement pattern stuff. And you may see that, especially a sport like baseball, these guys are in buses, they're traveling a ton in college baseball, you know, they're sitting for six, eight, nine hours you know, sometimes up to 20 hours in a weekend just to just to play a few games if they're, you know, especially these Northeast teams that have to travel down south early in the season. So, you know, keeping these guys mobile is extremely important. So again, when I traveled with the teams, I'd put like mobility programs in for our guys to do, um, you know, when we would take a, a break from the bus, but it is definitely difficult to kind of maintain that. So what you'll see here is I'm just kind of loading his iliacus and kind of rotating his hip in towards you, towards the camera. And that's kind of where I work on some more of these medial lateral oriented fibers. All right, so after I work in that medial lateral orientation, what I like to do is kind of for Lou, is more of like the passive uh, type of like pin and stretch work on his psoas. So basically what I do is kind of, and again, this is something you've got to access with your clients over time. Lou and I have been doing this for a long time, so he's really good at relaxing and kind of letting me get deep. Um, but it's definitely something I'd encourage you to practice and introduce slowly. It, it's not a race, it's not a sprint, this is a marathon, this type of work. So, so what I'm gonna do is kind of take that nice big deep breath in, and he's gonna, as he exhales, I'm gonna establish some access and some depth on my, my working hand, and then I'm just gonna start to rotate that hip, okay? So I'm rotating him into internal rotation and extension, and I can kind of, when I get him into that, like almost that hip scour or that internal rotation and extension, I can kind of feel that restriction in the in the tissue, and I am almost feeling like a little bit of a clunk too. And what that clunk is, is that psoas kind of snapping over uh, the pectineal ridge in his, in his pubic bone, okay? So remember these, this muscle is kind of orienting itself posterior to anterior as it attaches to the femur. So it kind of has to have a hard angle over that uh, pubic bone. And that's that deep clunk that you get. Like if you ever do like hip extension work, like a dead bug and you're getting a deep clunk in your hip and you wonder, oh, what is that? That's usually your psoas tendon kind of popping over that pubic bone. What's the closest distance between two points? And it's a straight line, right? So if you've got some tension issues there, it'll pop over that bone. How you feeling, Lou, all right? It's been a while. Yeah. All right, we're gonna work. 
nice and down to extension, okay? And this is kind of where I'd, fit, I'd follow this up with some quad work. He's wearing tights today, so it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult, but what we're gonna do is kind of just go on to the next one, which, which I like to do with Lou, and this is a more active technique, okay? So essentially what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna use two hands. I'm gonna kind of access this tissue, and then as he, as he exhales, what I'm gonna have him do is kind of dorsiflex his ankle up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but he's dorsiflexing his ankle up. He's gonna gently push his heel into the table, and then slowly, like on a four or five count, extend the knee and extend the hip all the way to straight, okay? So the reason I have him just gently press, and what I say is like, what we're trying to do is make the table fart, right? So he's trying to get like almost a squeak on the leather um, as he gets to the end. And the reason we do that is because what I want to do is kind of reciprocally inhibit his quads and his deep hip flexors by getting a little glute and hamstring activation. This is extremely, extremely effective on multiple levels, right? So A, I get that reciprocal inhibition like I just told you. B, it gives him something to focus on because this kind of active release work can definitely be a little bit more uncomfortable. Again, the reason I'm using two hands now is to spread my force out over a larger surface area and not just pushing as hard with like one or two fingers. So it's gonna be a little bit more comfortable for him. Again, not pushing harder, just using more fingers and more surface area. Okay, Lucy, you ready to go? So we take that nice deep breath in. I'm gonna access that psoas, pin it down, go ahead and extend. Two, three, four, all the way straight and back up. So what I will tell clients is, you know, as we get towards the end, it's gonna kinda of suck. You know, that, you, it's gonna kinda of be a little uncomfortable as you get towards that full extension. Exhale and push it out. All the way out, all the way out, all the way out. Nice job, back up. Breath in and exhale. Come on ahead. Do a couple more of those, okay? Deep breath. And exhale. Good. Nice job. Back up. Actually, this one's not terrible. Deep breath in. And exhale. Go ahead. Nice job, buddy. Let's go one more, okay? Deep breath in. And then exhale. Go ahead. Beautiful. Nice job, okay? So now we're gonna just kind of retest that hip and turn rotation, just relax here. You know, and that's kind of about, maybe that's in that 40 to 45 that we wanna see. That looks pretty, looks pretty good. All right guys, so the next thing I'm gonna do, right? So we just did his deep, his deep hip flexors, just released those, we definitely improved his mobility to a certain extent. The next thing I like to do is actually kind of a, a traction technique on the hip, okay? So this is a Golgi tendon organ reset. Um, basically what I'm gonna do is a grade three to four joint mobilization and inferior glide of the hip. And the reason I like to do this following the manual work is because it's a really great way to kind of reset some of these tension receptors in the hip. So remember, you know, he's not physically tight, he's not physically short in these muscles, he's just overactive or over facilitated in these muscles. So another way to talk to his nervous system is to kind of put a rapid amount of tension through that anterior chain kind of very quickly. And what that kind of does is like reset his muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs, okay? So those are those tension receptors uh, in the tissue that are responsible for kind of determining like those length tension relationships and the tension perceived by your central nervous system. So basically what we're gonna do is he's gonna hold onto the table. Again, you guys won't, won't really see that. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of, for Lou especially, you know, we're gonna kind of externally rotate his hips slightly, okay? And all I'm gonna do is kind of wiggle, 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 wiggle. His job is to kind of just turn off the muscles, okay? So we're gonna wiggle, 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 nice and relax, and then boom. I'm gonna give him a quick little bit of traction. You'll feel the hip, the ball kind of distract from the socket and drop right back in. It's not painful, right, Lou? No. Is that painful at all? Feels good, know. right? Yeah. Okay, so if you get a good psoas release and a good quad release, you'll actually be able to do that. And look what that's done for us, even more hip internal rotation than we just had. Okay, so it's a nice little hip reset. You can even see his external rotators are a little locked up too. I know this angle's not great for you guys, but um, we're gonna have to definitely work on his deep rotators, okay? All right. So we're gonna go ahead and, and work on this other hip. We're just gonna kind of chat and catch up because this is the first time I've seen Lou in a few months. Uh, he had been seeing me during the season a lot, driving down from school to get these weekly sessions in, but towards the end of the year in summer ball, it's been really tough for us to get get in and get this work done. So, um, Lou, why don't you just tell us a little bit about like, you know, 
what you feel as an athlete when these things start kind of tightening up on you. Are there certain things like whether it's at the plate, in the fields, running, anything that you feel like, okay, I know my hips are, are starting to get a little bit tight again. Um, I feel like it's at the plate. Mostly at the plate, yeah. yeah. So I'll start taking BP, hitting off the tee, stuff like that. Right. And if I feel like I'm pulling off the ball, mm. like this front hip, the left hip will fly open. Right. And this back hip really can't get through, so the only way that all right, explain, most of my viewers yeah. are like people like me. Explain what flying open means for, to a non-baseball person, okay? I, I know what you mean, because we, you know, obviously I've been working in baseball for a while. Explain what fly open means. So, flying open is basically the hips are turning and they're not in sync with your upper body, basically. Right, exactly. And that's definitely big problem at the plate. So losing that foot early too, the foot kind of opens up Lose on you. Power. Right. And right. So what he's explaining is exactly, you know, what most athletes, I mean, I think Lou kind of explained it really well. Most athletes wouldn't be able to explain that really well to you like that. Um, but essentially what he's saying is like his hip sequencing and his upper back rotation. And, and then again, with his hands and his arms are just not timed up well. So what ends up happening is he runs out of room in that front side hip. And so it throws off the entire sequence of events from the bottom up, okay? And, and you know, again, for a hitter or a thrower, more than 50% of the power is gonna come from their legs and, and being able to transmit that force from their legs into their swing or into the ball, into the throw. So, you know, making sure that your athletes have their prerequisite mobility, like we said before, having the ability to rotate into that front side hip is not only helping him at the plate be a better athlete and be a better player, you know, where it keeps his bat in the zone longer, it also helps stave off injuries. So again, when you, when you guys hear me say, I use manual therapy as a performance enhancement tool, that's what I mean, you know, we're, he's not hurt right now. You know, this is not something we're doing because he's, at, do you have any low back pain right now? No, no. He hasn't had low back pain in two years, more than that. We're doing this primarily as a way to mitigate the stress of the season. Go ahead and extend. All the way straight. Like lose like automatic now. Sure. We've been doing this so long. This is the one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now I'm working on his right hip and as a right-handed batter, come back up. This is where his, ex his extension really comes in. Okay. So he's going to be able to extend and externally rotate on this backside hip and drive his momentum forward. So where the internal rotation is super important on the front side, on the back side, that extension becomes even more important. So as is definitely implicated on both sides for him, okay? You'll commonly see a nominant rotations in baseball players and rotational athletes. As long as they're asymptomatic, I leave them alone because that's an adaptation to the sport, okay? That's giving him an advantage. You know, if, if he was reporting like SI joint pain, go ahead or low back pain to me and he had an anominant rotation, I may do some muscle energy techniques or some joint mobilizations to address that and give him a bit of symmetry for a pain relief perspective. One more time, Lou. But in, in an asymptomatic rotational athlete, I'll just leave it alone, okay? Just because, again, it's gonna continue to happen. All right, guys, so if you've been watching any of my other videos, you, you, you've probably seen me do some of this work before. Um, so what I'm gonna do is kind of work on his deep hip rotators on the posterior side, okay? So these are other muscles that, again, while I'm evaluating an athlete or I'm evaluating a new client, I'm looking for the common threads, okay? So again, in, in a situation where I see a lack of hip extension and internal rotation, I'm gonna look at the psoas a little closer, okay? Just because that, that action is opposite of those two. Um, but for Lou, when I put him prone in a hip extended position, he's also fairly limited in his rotation there. You'll see his external rotation looks pretty good here, but his internal rotation, again, I apologize for the camera angle, is maybe in the 30s here, okay? So this is where I kind of get into that piriformis, I get into that obturator. So essentially landmark wise, what I'm looking for is that greater trochanter. I'm gonna go right above that. Again, you know, it's, it's really posterior anatomically speaking, but it's above that for me. I'm gonna stick my elbow right in that shelf only because 
this elbow kind of allows me um, to regulate that pressure a little bit better. I'm gonna range him into internal rotation, okay? So again, this is like a pin and stretch technique. I'm doing this as a way to kind of open up this hip mobility a little bit more. And again, I mean, if you got guys that are sitting on a bus a lot, definitely look at their piriformis, look at their deep hip rotators. I guarantee you they're jacked up. Um, you know, this is a nice little feel good thing. He feels it when he's in his glutes too, and he's gonna squat today in the gym, so. So that's another really important point um, with these, when I'm working with my athletes in recovery lab. So he's gonna train right after this. And the key for us is going to be the fact that he's, I'm gonna open his hips up on his squat day. And I do that on purpose because, you know, yeah, after manual therapy, he's gonna lose a little bit of his top end strength only because I'm inhibiting these muscles, but, the benefit is, is I'm gonna basically create or expand his range of motion for his deep hip flexion, AKA in his squat. And he's gonna go in the gym and he's gonna use it right away. Okay, that's the key is to open up the mobility and then use it right away. Teach your nervous system how to use it, you know, under load and then it'll download in your brain as, okay, this is mobility that we can keep. Again, his mobility was limited today. When I first met Lou, it basically was non-existent, okay? and his back killed him when he, when he was at the plate, it killed him when he squatted. Um, he has, like I said before, he hasn't had any discomfort in years because we've made a marginal improvement to this. And it's just, you know, he feels when he's opened up, you know, that he's even that much more explosive and that much better uh, in the game. So right here, we're in the optimization phase. We're just continuing to work on these things to kind of bulletproof him from injury, but also to kind of, you know, help him take his performance to the next level. So now I'm kind of working on that glute med. So basically I got my hand where I kind of posted him up here, got my thumb in that glute med, even down into like that TFL as I externally rotate his hip. Okay, so this next thing we're gonna do is this right hip was really kind of locked up for Lou today. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm putting him in the sideline position, the top legs at 90 degrees, kind of touching the table though, right? So his hips are kind of leaning forward towards you guys. Um, and I'm gonna use my elbow kind of in this glute med, right? So again, greater trochanter. I'm gonna go anatomically superior, but obviously I'm moving off to my left and I'm just gonna push kind of straight down in there. Okay, this is tender for him, okay? So Lou, you're just gonna breathe into the pressure, okay? You can do a couple of things from here. You can, you can passively kind of move his hip. What I like to do is have him do it, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and keep that knee here, raise that ankle up off the ground and back down. You're gonna feel that muscle flex, okay? You're not crushing it, easy into the pressure. So as it comes on, I'm right on it. Exhale as it comes off. And then as he turns it off, I'll give him a little bit of extra. Okay, so this is like that contract, relax. Um, again, it's another way to speak to the nervous system. My job is just to maintain the pressure, let him flex into it. Okay, and then just kind of adjust where I'm putting that pressure. And exhale, let's go one more, Lou, you are great. Exhale. Okay, pain threshold wise, it's a little bit higher on the scale versus like some of the passive techniques. One more time. But it's really, really effective, especially if this is like a tender area for him, okay? And down. All right, so now we're gonna kind of hit up this, this right hip now. And this is kind of us just finishing up this treatment. Um, So again, I'm just working him into internal rotation, but I definitely want to just take this opportunity to say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're gonna really work hard to continue to put out quality content for you guys, you know, and kind of give you a glimpse inside Recovery Lab, inside these sessions, um, what we're doing in here, why we're doing it, it obviously is the most important thing. Um, and just seeing it translate to the performance side. So again, I appreciate the support. I appreciate your time. You know, the time you spent watching this video um, really means a lot. So definitely hit that subscribe button for us. We definitely appreciate it. You can follow me on Instagram at MikeStella underscore ATC. You can follow AMP on Instagram at under, AMP underscore athlete. You can check us out online at ampathletes.com. If you're interested in a recovery lab appointment and an evaluation, you can also book that online. You can go to ampathletes.com forward slash recovery lab, scroll down to the bottom and do like a little appointment search. And you can definitely schedule a session with me if you're in this area. 
But if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I will definitely get back to you. I will answer them. Um, we will, you know, we're gonna do another product review video coming out probably next week on uh, grasping or uh, instrument assisted soft tissue tools. Really cool video. I'm going to show you guys some different lower cost options that are out there if you're somebody who hasn't done a lot of instrument work in the past and you want to start adding that to your repertoire. We're going to do a video kind of showing you how to get started, where you can get quality tools um, on the cheap and then also probably follow that up with a kind of instrument assisted basics like how to video, like the basic strokes how, when, and why to use it. And then, uh, so we got a lot of great content coming out soon. Again, thanks guys for coming down and we will see you guys next time in the recovery lab.